Albo assumed office claiming to have a mandate to radically alter our energy industry, reduce emissions and compel us to drive battery powered cars. He had nothing of a sort. Having won only 32% of the primary vote, a shrewder politician would have at least spent some time trying to slowly persuade the electorate that these ideas were sound. Instead, he unleashed the smug Chris Bowen to tell us we will very soon be paying for expensive, unreliable energy and driving around looking for time-wasting battery charging stations, whether we like it or not. That the same policies are already causing destitution and hardship, not to mention electoral upheaval in Europe, seems to have escaped the attention of Bowen and Albo. Then there is the voice to parliament, which is the signature policy of Albo's first year in office. He said the voice would, quote, end 121 years of Commonwealth governments arrogantly believing they know enough to impose their own solutions on Aboriginal people, unquote. This cultural relativism is not shared by the majority of Australians who simply want their Indigenous brothers and sisters to enjoy the benefits of living in one of the freest and most prosperous nations in history. Indeed, many people would find Albo's assertion that Australia is still some sort of colonial oppressor deeply offensive. There are many good arguments against voting for a voice to Parliament, as Alan Jones has been saying repeatedly on his show. We're not being told who will be making this voice, how they will be selected, how long they will be there, whether they will be paid, and what obligation Parliament will have to comply with their demands. Australians are rightly cautious about changing their constitution, and Albo should know it. Should a referendum on The Voice fail, as is likely, he will be marked as a leader with poor political judgment and out of touch with the community. Add to this how the world might look in two years. Inflation in Britain is predicted to hit 18% next year. The United States is being ruined by Joe Biden. China is aggressively asserting itself in our region, including among nations we once thought were our allies. And Australia is forfeiting its energy security by switching to Chinese-made windmills and solar panels. What sort of leader might the Australian elector electorate turn to in such circumstances? To answer that, let's bring in former Queensland Senator Amanda Stoker. Amanda, welcome. Hi, Rick. Great to be with you. First, let's talk about the traps Albo is setting for himself, especially with net zero emissions targets and renewables. It's already obvious from what is happening in Europe that these policies will lead to power shortages and skyrocketing power bills. Amanda, will there be widespread resentment about this when Albo faces the voters again in 2025? I think there will be, Fred, and there are two reasons. The first you've identified, and that is to say there will be shortages like that that the Germans experienced last winter um, and like that that the Spanish are experiencing now in 40-degree heat waves, only being able to have um, very limited access to air conditioning. The other element, though, is that by leaning hard into this 43% emissions target, they're going to find that we are more dependent than ever on Chinese solar panels. The Chinese dominance of the solar panel market is upwards of 95% in every single component that goes into making them. At a time when we are facing um, a changing environment in the Pacific and elsewhere, um, we would be finding ourselves dependent for parts, for service, for manufacture, on a country with a similar ethos to Russia in terms of its ability to use energy as uh, something of a weapon in geopolitics. That's another risk that I think will come to light in Australians' eyes. And all at the same time, they'll have record power bills. Um, we've uh, the, the reduction promised by Labor well and truly in the rearview vision mirror. So um, I think there will be serious consequences come next election. 